Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 28th Qt tutorial with C++. And we're going to dive a little deeper into not just Qt, but uh, computers themselves. And today we're going to be covering threads. And this has been requested by a few people, and yes, we are finally here. So let's just dive right in, go File, New Project, and let's make a console application. Call it My Thread wherever you normally put your projects and finish alright first thing we want to do is create a new class so C++ C++ class and we'll call it uh, my thread and we're just going to leave out any of the other information because I want to explain this as we go so just hit finish and then we've got the my thread class. Let's add our includes. Oops. Include Qt core. All right. And now we want to actually. Oops. Public Q thread. And what we're doing is we're taking this class and we're inheriting QThread. And QThread has a public function called run. And you see we are overriding that function. And what this is, is when you start the thread, this is the function that's going to be called run. So let's go into our implementation here and let's actually make our includes. We're going to include QDebug, and let's say void, whoops, get rid of that bookmark, my thread, and run. All right, now we've got our code, and this is what's going to be triggered when the thread is run. I should say when the thread is started, sorry. This may sound confusing, but we're going to explain this really quick here. Alright, let's flip into our main, and we are going to include that class. My thread. Alright, and we will say my thread, M thread. Now that we have an instance of that thread, we need to start that thread. So we'll say M thread start. And you see there is a priority, and you can inherit priority. And we're going to go over priority in a little bit here, but for now, just do M thread start. Compile and run. and you see it says running so it did exactly what we wanted it to do now as you guessed it gets a little more complex than that we need to explain a few things here so I'll start task manager if you're on Windows this is probably pretty familiar here are the processes every application is a process and every process can have multiple threads and you see that each process is using a certain amount of memory well, each thread, as you guess, uses a certain amount of memory. And you can take these and you can set the priority. Real time, high, above, low, blah, blah, blah. Basically what you're doing is saying that the, the CPU is going through and it's giving each one of these processes a slice of time to work with. If you increase the priority, you're saying, okay, you get a bigger chunk of the available time. That's really all it is. And if you're sitting here going, well, that seemed incredibly simple. Well, you're right. Qt makes it incredibly simple to work with threads. It's very easy. You uh, you simply create a class, inherit from QThread, and you override the run function, and then you can do anything you want to do. Now, 
let's expand this class a little bit because I think this example was a little too easy. So what we're going to do here is say QString name and we're going to have the ability to name our thread. So let's just save that. Go into here and we're going to call this mthread1 and then we'll say mthread1 that way it now has a name and we're going to make a couple of these say 2 2 2 and let's say 3 3 and three. And let's grab this. We now have three threads. Now each thread is going to run the same code. Each time you fire up this thread it's going to call this right here. So what good are threads? Well if you're running an application and you want to do something that's going to take a very long time, like let's say you want to count to a trillion, but you don't want your application to lock up. You want it to be able to do other things. That's what a thread is. You say, here, go do this task, it go away. And the thread goes into the background, does its task, and then you can query it later and say, what's your status? So what we're going to do here is we're going to say this name running. And let's just save it, fire this up. And sure enough, thread 1, 2, and 3 all ran. Now let's get a little more complex here. And let's just say for int, oops, help if I could spell for, for int i equals 0, i less than, and let's just say 1,000. i plus plus, in other words, we're going to increment i. And we are going to just simply print out the thread along with the number. And this will show you the real power of threads and it's going to look like a big blur but you'll understand it once you see it run. And it went very quickly because I have a pretty pretty hefty computer and we didn't count very high but you can see here thread 2, 998, thread 1, 999 thread 3, 9, 8, 9. So as you see, these are all running at the same time. They're all counting. Let's expand this number out. Uh, much larger here. Let's run this. And you can see it's counting. And you can see that each thread is running independently. And I don't know if the video is picking it up fast enough, but I can see 2, 1, 3, and you see the numbers just incrementing, incrementing, incrementing. So that's how threads work. You can run multiple threads at a time. That is the bare bone basics of how the Q thread and how threads in general work. Um, we're going to cover this over some more videos because this actually gets a little more complicated, especially when you start accessing uh, variables. Um, you need things that are called locks, and I'm running out of time in this video, so we just simply won't cover it in this one. Uh, but this is Brian. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining, and uh, stay tuned.